Hey there, welcome back to the baseball show right here on Nickel Press TV. We want to thank everybody who's been tuning in, subscribing, liking the videos, throwing your suggestions around for players you want us to cover. I'm your host, Dan Singleton, joined as always by Ralph Lifshitz. We ask you to please continue to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Like the videos, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you like to do your social media, we're there. Uh, shout out real quick to the Reddit subscribers and members, as well as the Razzball community. Uh, that's where you can find Ralph and I uh, predominantly when we're not doing this show. But anyway, if you're unaware, if this is your first time, we have the player library where we go back and we isolate each player we've covered and then post them there so you can navigate through, find the specific player we've covered, and just cut through the uh, riffraff. Speaking of riffraff, I've been trying to cut out all the jibber jabber we do at the beginning of these things, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, last qu- last real thing on the uh, player library, we're up to 54 players covered with an additional nine being added this week based on the three episodes we're doing now. So there you have it. Three pitchers today. And uh, these three pitchers are all kind of similar in the fact that they are currently being drafted anywhere between starting pitcher 15 and starting pitcher 20. And there's not really much to say about how good they are. It's just really a matter of do we feel confident in them living up to their ADP expectations. <laughs> the first of these guys is Kyle Hendricks, Chicago Cubs starter. And Ralph, all I keep hearing is that he's in for a regression. But I ask why. I mean, he's got back-to-back 30-plus star seasons. He's still just 27 years old, so he's in his prime. He's got the best offense in baseball behind him. I really don't get the downside to this guy. He's being drafted as though people do believe in him. His ADP is currently starting pitcher 16, uh, according to NFBC uh, data. Uh, But yet no one really seems excited by drafting (laughs) uh, Hendricks. I'm telling you, get excited because this guy is pretty damn good. You know, he's a junky off-speed pitcher. He uses a sinker ball to keep the ball on the ground. He was 21st in the league in that regard last year, 15th in 2015. And he also knows how to get a, a strikeout, having bumped his swing and strike percentage up from 8 to 10% over the last year. Uh, I don't know that his 2.13 ERA is sustainable, but if you do look at his career, expecting him to repeat a sub-3 ERA is certainly within line. He's currently going in the fifth round, and uh, he's the guy I want to start targeting as my first pitcher. I'm basically, I'm trying to get him everywhere I can. What says you, Ralph? Yeah, and I tend to agree with you on this. It's funny. Um, I think everyone is really focusing on the ERA, and they're focusing on his 250 baby, you know, the batting average on balls in play. That's incredibly low. Um, you know, league average is somewhere around 300. So obviously that's not a sustainable number. He also had an 80% left on base. Average is somewhere between 70 and 75. So he got a little lucky. It wasn't absurd. But I think there's a couple of reasons that Hendricks uh, had such a low batting average of balls in play and was able to keep runners uh, on base uh, when they did get on against him. And I think the biggest thing is he's number one in soft contact in the major leagues. He had a 25% soft contact rate. Uh, no, I think everyone, the next closest was maybe 2 or 3%. So it was a significant margin uh, that he gets soft contact in comparison to other pitchers. The other thing that I love about him uh, is he's number one in first strike rate. 68.6% of the time, he gets the first strike against any battery faces. So it's almost 70% of the time, he's getting ahead and counts. We know that when a pitcher gets ahead and counts, they're able to control the at-bat uh, against even the best batters. Uh, you mentioned the offense. We've got that going for him. I think 16 wins is, is absolutely repeatable. He might even be able to win 20 with the kind of stuff he has, the team he has behind him. Uh, there aren't a whole lot of reasons to dislike Hendricks. I really think everyone's focusing way too much on the batting average and balls in play, not looking at the fact that this guy has a skill set that um, drives that number. I mean, maybe it'll be 275 next year, 280, you know, if it went up to 300. Even even if he was a little unlucky, I think we're looking at a guy at minimum that has a mid-3 ZRA, you know, a whip under 1.10, um, and, a, and a K rate somewhere in the eights. So he's improved every year. He's young. As you said, he's a horse. He, he pitches a lot of innings. So if you're in uh, points leagues where, where innings uh, pitched are a category uh, or, you know, get your points. He certainly has even more value there. I like Hendricks a lot. I think he's being undersold a little bit because, like I said, I think people are focusing on the Bay Bip and the left on base percentage. Yeah, speaking of the whip, he had a whip under one. And of the pitchers with the whip under one with 190 more, 
uh, 190 or more innings thrown, only he and Max Scherzer can lay claim to that. When we think of Max Scherzer, we think sexy stud, starting pitcher. Kendricks should be considered that way as well, but nobody seems to want to vault him into that territory. Uh, you know, I'm looking at a repeat of 2016 as his baseline where he had the 16 wins, as you mentioned, but I think he's got a serious chance to crack 20 for the first time. And the funny thing to me, and I think some of the reason is the, the kind of negative, I don't want to say negative, but kind of the not this rosy outlook for Kendricks is because they already have John Lester and they already have Jake Arrieta on that Cubs rotation. And you look at both of those guys, it's probably the one and two with Hendricks being the three. So it's kind of like in football drafting, you know, two wide receivers from the same team. It's, it's like you, you feel like, well, they all can't be 20 game winners. But the thing is, they can. They have that kind of team. Uh, we kind of saw something similar to this with the Mets of the 80s with their stellar rotation where they had multiple 20 game winners. So if you're worried that, there's not enough room, you know, uh, or a big enough piece of the pie for Hendricks. Uh, I think you're drastically overthinking it, and Hendricks is somebody that you should definitely be excited about having on your team. So, uh, again, you know, with his ADP being currently 16th pitcher, not to say people aren't buying into it. It just doesn't seem to be that he gets the fanfare that, you know, somebody of his ilk should uh, should be, you know, carrying. Andy, I, gotta, I was going to say yeah, I had a question ahead. for you. If you know you're 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 drafting your team, whether it's you know redraft or with not dynasty, would you rather have Arietta, Lester, or Hendricks? And that's a great question. And you know, I think Arietta's the one that jumps out with Lester aging a little. Uh, but you know, I, I'm not going to be a, a chooser if I'm begging for any of those th- or any of those three arms. I, I'd be happy with any three of them. I'd take them all. Um, if I had to rank them, like I said, I'd probably rank them: Arietta, Hendricks, Lester. Uh, as crazy as that sounds, you know, I just I factor age, especially into Dynasty, and Lester's just the oldest of the trio, so that will be my determining factor. Ag- agree on Lester. I think I'd take Hendricks over over Arietta. I think I would take Hendricks over Arietta. Arietta's striker, you know, uh, Caper Nine was down. They can get a lot. I think I think Hendricks is better value. I just do. I wouldn't I wouldn't touch Arietta. Well, there you go. I mean, you just agreed with me and and magnified it even more. So. <laughs> Get excited about Kyle Hendricks. Uh, but shifting gears to uh, an aging pitcher, uh, one that has kind of the persona that we kind of are saying Hendricks should have, but hasn't even lived up necessarily to the to the reputation of that, is Zach Greinke, who is going as a starting pitcher at 91. Um, you know, unfortunately, I think his better days are behind him. He turned 33 in October. He's playing in a horrible pitcher's park. And... Being signed till he could basically retire, I'm not really sure there's much motivation left for good old Uncle Ricola. But uh, maybe that's an unfair statement to make. I mean, I truly see him being a grade below what we've come to expect when you hear his name, but he is still good. Uh, it's just you're expecting him to be this stud all-star. And if you look at his numbers, he's had good whip, he's had good ERAs, logged innings, et cetera, et cetera. He's only come close to winning 20 games once when he won 19, and that's – coming close to win 20. He's never even won 20 once. So I don't know how we can necessarily talk about him as this great stud pitcher that he seems to, you know, be thought of. Uh, do you have a problem with that as well? Yeah, and, I, you know, good old good old Uncle Ricola, as you like to call him, the Swiss Miss stud. Uh, Zach Greinke, you know, it's funny. We think alike because the first thing that I have in my show notes is his best days are behind him, and I totally believe that. If you look across the board, not only did he move to a worse pitching environment, obviously Arizona, other than Colorado, is probably – best hitting park in baseball. He's also in a division with the Rockies, so he's going to see them a little bit more than we did, obviously, uh, remain in, in the NL West. So I don't know how much that's a deterrent, but I think when you compound that with, with uh, uh, you know, Chase Field, I think it adds up. The other thing is across the board, you know, his fly balls were up. Uh, his hard contact was up. Um, his home run per nine was 1.30, which is awful. Uh, as I mentioned, the, you know, the ground ball declined by almost 3%. Uh, his home run to fly ball doubled from what it was in his last season in L.A. Velocity was down on all of his pitches. The swing and strike rate dropped from 12% to 10.4%. And, you know, just just across the board, hitters are making better and more contact in and out of the zone in his pitches. So, you know, right across the board, Greinke had a down year. You know, he was a little bit injured, but, um, you know, maybe he doesn't have an awful year in 2017, but certainly doesn't justify the price tag and, and his current ADP. Yeah, you know, he was dealing with the strained oblique in 2016. He should start the season fully recovered. But, you know, 
uh, as he advances in age, does that mean he's necessarily fully back? I mean, is 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 it completely behind him? Is it something that could flare up again? I'm not, you know, concerned so much about that as much as I am with the other things we were talking about with with his home park, with his with his never being a, a solid wins kind of guy. Uh, one thing I did want to point out, which is absolutely crazy to me, is that while he would have finished tied for 20th in run support with 5.3 runs per game had he qualified, he won 13 out of his 26 starts despite giving up nearly a career worst 4.37 ERA. I mean, just think about that for a minute. He only started 26 games and he factored into, not only did he factor in the decision in half of those, but he got wins in half of those. Mm -hmm. And he was getting not even a full run support more than what he was giving up a game. I mean, that just like doesn't necessarily add up. That's the stars being aligned in your favor. He's a statistical anomaly. Um, you know, like I said, I want to believe he'll be good. I just don't think he'll be great. And if you're paying starting pitcher 21 price, you're expecting him to be a top 20 pitcher. And I just don't know that he still has that left in him. Um, just kind of to fill everybody in on the Uncle Ricola thing. Tahal and I, the Lord, Mr. Beddick, when uh, we were doing Roto RX last year, we referred to Zach Granke as somebody that looked like he belonged on a Swiss Miss box or in a recall of commercial blowing the uh, whatever the, the, you know, Swiss horn is. So that's the Uncle Ricola reference. Now you know. Ricola. There you go. All right. Uh, so I think we're in agreement so far that Hendricks is a guy we love. Granke is a guy we don't want to say hate, but don't love. So if you're choosing between the two, definitely stay clear, Granky. Opt for Hendricks. And this next guy, um, I really don't know. I, I'm bringing up props for this guy because I really don't know that I can honestly assess Jacob Anthony DeGrom, um, uh, you know, objectively because he just may be my favorite pitcher of all time. So I'm going to let Ralph take this one. <laughs> Uh, as for DeGrom, I mean, obviously, uh, I'm a little bit nervous. I mean, I know he had the, the ulnar nerve surgery. He had that removed, um, you know, last year. I think I had, you know, I, I've mentioned previously that um, I think it was 20, 23 starts or 21 starts. You know, his ERA was 2.48. His last three starts after the injury was 9.82. So, obviously, it affected him. Leaving balls up in the zone. Wasn't able to throw strikes in a consistent basis the way he usually does. Um, but across the board, you look at DeGrom's numbers, and they were just as good as they had always been. Uh, he's only 28 years old. The real question with him is health. Um, you know, in Dynasty, he's somebody that I'm still a little questionable about. I know that we have our Raz 30 league that uh, I started in. He's been helping me out with. It's a 30-team league doing Raz ball. And I just traded DeGrom to add a, a couple of hitters. And, uh, you know, I have the Mets. And I don't know. I mean, I'm a, I'm a little bit nervous long term about, you know, what DeGrom's going to be. All these guys have elbow problems. Uh, if I'm going to choose one Mets pitcher with an elbow problem, it's going to be Cindergaard just because he's got the high octane stuff. Uh, if you went with DeGrom, I don't think it would be a bad decision. And I actually don't think they're all that far off. It's just, like I said, uh, you know, Thor has the has the big fastball. He's got the nasty stuff. He's got the nickname, the hair, all that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, I think I think he plays up to the media a little bit more. And maybe I buy into that, unfortunately. Well, what was crazy is despite everything you said playing up to the media more, he's kind of like, you know, not even the media's favorite on the Mets rotation no. with Matt Harvey being there, everything like that. Uh, I know it's kind of blasphemous for a Yankee fan to say one of his all-time favorite players is a Met. But, you know, there's some history with DeGrom and myself, you know, a few years ago before anybody knew this guy. I was telling everybody, pick him up everywhere you can. And, you know, sometimes when you make a proclamation like that, you, you really leave yourself exposed. And DeGrom becoming an elite pitcher – kind of made me look like a genius to those who knew me at the time and were listening to that. So I will never, ever forget that. And I'm deeply indebted to him for that. Uh, when reality meets fantasy, it's a great thing. A few, a few other things, though. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll know uh, every time DeGrom starts because I hashtag every start as a DeGrom day. Uh, but, you know, a little more to the point, I ran the numbers last season because I, I just sit here watching in amazement every time the Mets blow uh, should be victory for DeGrom. And I forgot what the total was, but it was something like over 22 times the Mets have blown a win in which he should have gotten the W. And this is not like five, five games where he left in the sixth inning, you know, 
having given up five runs and, you know, just became a slugfest. No, I'm talking about this is something like 90% of those games he had given up two runs or less. And in like 90% of those games, it was one run or less. And the majority was like zero runs. And I'm talking like leaving the game in the eighth or ninth inning. That's how crazy it is. I mean, the Mets literally could be keeping this guy out of Cooperstown if your career win total is the ter- determining factor for you to, you know, get a bust in Cooperstown. I mean, I really have nothing to add other than the health concern. As Ralph mentioned, he, he did have his uh, ulnar nerve move from his elbow, and it clearly affected him from every He's 100% healthy at this point. He has no limitations or restrictions heading into the season. I'm all in on him. I think everybody else should be as well. I, I will continue supporting this guy until he hangs up the spikes. Uh, I think his ADP currently is the 18th starting pitcher. Uh, 75th player overall is kind of low for where you would normally expect him to be. So you might have a, a, a sliver of hope to get a guy like DeGrom as your second pitcher, which is just phenomenal to get uh, a starting pitcher one as anything later than that. So I don't really know if I can add anything much more to that. You know, my stance is completely subjective due to my man crush. But, Ralph, you want to take us out with this one? Yeah, I was going to say, one last thing I wanted to ask you. Are you aware of anyone else who's come back from uh, ulnar nerve surgery? Yes, a gentleman by the name of Henry Rowan Gardner. Uh, some of you may be familiar with him. Ralph, Rosenbagger. Uh, yeah, Ralph, Ralph did a detailed write-up on him over at Razzball when he was a <laughs> uh, No, but anyway, uh, yeah, I, what was it, Rookie of the Year? That's the movie we're referencing. You know, it little... was Rookie of the Year, long before he was in an American Pie, and, and uh, he was the one that banged the pie, right? That was somebody else. No, that was him. But he wasn't the one that banged the pie. Was it? He was the one that was uh, with uh, Tara Reid in the movie. But Exactly. There exactly. you go. But we'll save our jibber-jabber for the regular season when we're looking for things to talk about. For now, we're going to keep it focused on the players. This has been the baseball show. These are three pitches we think you should or should not want. Hopefully you like what we had to say. If you did like it, please give us a thumbs up. If you're not already, subscribe to our channel here at Nickel Press TV. Make sure to look out for all the new episodes. We do three a week, three hitters, three pitchers, and three prospects. Uh, You can go check out the player library and see every player we've covered to date, isolated individually on their own, alphabetized for your convenience. So just go there, scroll through, see a guy you're curious about. Good luck to everybody playing fantasy this year. We'll see you next time.